In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions. We have quite a bit of severe weather that's upcoming as well. We will take a look at the tropics also and the overall upcoming pattern. Let's get straight into this video though. And first things first, we're taking a look here at our current radar conditions. And as you can see, we do have some light to moderate rainfall going on up here in the northwestern corner of our nation. We do also have some moderate to heavy precipitation ongoing for the central regions of the nation. And there is some isolated tropical thunderstorm activity going on down here in the southeast. They call it tropical because it's coming off the Gulf. It's reacting. Uh, the environment is very tropical down here right now, uh, and it is going to be tropical downpours. If you've been down to the Bahamas or even um, closer to the equator, you would know uh, what I'm talking about. It can just, you know, it can be sunny one minute, and then a thunderstorm ro is rolling in the next minute, and then 20 minutes later it's done. It's that type of deal. Super humid, super hot, uh, and thunderstorms off and on. We do have some showery activity up here in the northeast as well, mostly for Canada there, but a little bit of the United States is getting some of that as well. Let's zoom into some of these regions, though. Let's just take a look. We do have some of this activity, like I said, there for Washington, Oregon, Montana, Idaho. All of these states are seeing some of this showery activity, and there is actually some moderate to heavy showers ongoing, especially uh, in this corridor in here. Uh, kind of stretching through portions of Oregon, Washington, right around that border there, and then even up through a little bit of Idaho and Montana. That just seems to be where the heaviest bands are at at this point. But this is pretty persistent rainfall. What I mean by that is this looks like at least a couple of hours, if not more, maybe half a day of rainfall. It's about to take place in a light to moderate fashion, so this will end up being quite a bit of that rainfall. Now, I did see some activity down here, it looks like, yeah, maybe some sprinkles around for a lot of these folks down here. Uh, obviously, this is a pretty isolated region. Pretty uncommon to see rainfall by any means up there anyway. Uh, but there is some showers, it appears, very, very isolated showers. For Minnesota and Iowa and Wisconsin, there is a couple of areas here of these lighter to moderate uh, showers and maybe even thunderstorms, especially here on the southern end. It does appear that could be in the form of some thunderstorms. Uh, and as we head further south, we can see where there is some Definitely some thunderstorms down here for portions of uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas at this point. Uh, potentially some thunderstorms up here in this more northern region, but definitely showers at least. Uh, but for this corridor down here, I'm not circling it because then it's going to get too cluttered, but we can see that there is some thunderstorms for sure down here. So let's just zoom in uh, to this area because we've had some especially concerning thunderstorms roll through this area here in Oklahoma, now in Arkansas. And those are looking pretty intense even overnight. We have the deeper reds popping up, indicating some stronger pockets of thunderstorms. Even those severe thunderstorm warnings down there for southern Arkansas. So these are intense storms at this point that you're probably waking up to. Um, I think they're central time, so it's probably about 7.40 a.m. at the time I'm making this video. Now, as we roll our way north, we can see that there was some pretty bad thunderstorms actually taking place here in eastern Kansas there. We did see some of these taking place up there as well. Uh, and those have kind of rolled through and dissipated a little bit. But just to the west of Kansas City, there is those isolated thunderstorms and showers still taking place, as you can see. Um, but those do look quite minor at this point. Now, let's see, where, where should I go? Okay, so we do have some of those tropical thunderstorms and downpours taking place here for Louisiana. Uh, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama there. We can see those little isolated thunderstorms popping up. There is some more uh, larger areas of thunderstorms down here offshore as well. Uh, and then for Florida, we can see it's one of those very tropical days here in Florida with tropical downpours, probably very humid, probably very hot. Uh, just overall a very tropical day down there for Florida overall. Uh, and we can see some of these are threatening to impact the Carolinas a little bit. Um, even North Carolina is seeing some of those showers and thunderstorms um, but those are heading further and further offshore, so I think the chance is going to actually be diminishing through the day. And then here, last but not least, is those showers up here for the northeast that are taking place. Uh, we can see that probably northern Maine is going to start to get more of these through the day today as this pocket kind of rolls through this region. So we will see that taking place at some point. So if you do happen to live in this northern half of the state of Maine, uh, it is more than likely that later today you're going to be expecting rainfall. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the upcoming pattern. We're going to talk about those tropics, the severe weather, everything. Now, here we are taking a look at the upcoming pattern. This is really what we're looking at. We see jet stream just about like this. And we see a lot of these storms are riding along the jet stream. So they're pretty close to where that jet stream is at. And this is not 
very uncommon at all. Uh, we are seeing these storms just ride right along this. We see the activity up here in the northwest and also for the southeast and quite a bit up here for the northeast as well. Um, so we're seeing some pockets of that storminess in general. Uh, as we approach tomorrow afternoon, uh, we can see tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening time frame, we do see more of that storminess spreading into the east along that jet stream. Again, it's coming through like this, and we're seeing a lot of the storminess ride in with that. The northwest gets even more active, actually, than it was, so we're going to see more activity as we're approaching tomorrow on Saturday the 11th. Uh, and by Sunday the 12th here, uh, we can see that there's going to be even more storminess potentially here for the eastern United States, so more of that and even more for the northwest as well. So things are going to get be getting even more active as we approach later into this weekend. Jet stream is doing about like this. Some warmer air moving its way into the uh, central United States. Some colder air making its way into the northwest. Still some cold air in the northeast, but all, overall the warmth looks to be spreading eastward by this point. Monday, things are really going to be warming up for the east as we're seeing a jet stream about like this. So what's happening is this warm air is riding in just like this, even into the eastern United States this time around. Um, we have a low about right here, and we have a warm front up here, probably a cold front developing underneath, so that's riding along that jet stream as you can see. Um, we have a lot of cold air making its way into the northwest, allowing for snowfall to take place in these regions actually, as we can see some blues for the Rockies, the Cascades. Uh, so it is a little late season, it's not unheard of, but um, it is pretty far into the season for this to be taking place. Uh, and by the time we reach about Tuesday, we can see Probably going to be even hotter for the eastern United States, if you ask me. Um, looking very dramatic here with this jet stream. We've been talking about this for days, though. Um, but this is looking pretty crazy. Uh, and then we have a lot of cold air billowing down behind this low. And the low is about right here. Probably has a cold front trying to develop there. And we see the warm front. Actually, we see the precipitation in there. So this is a low again. We see this precipitation in here. It's likely what's taking place is a warm front in here. So that usually brings some showery activity. And I would not be surprised if we start to see thunderstorms in this area as this cold front rolls through. So we'll see if that ends up taking place. Just move on a couple of frames. Yeah, there it is. So we see that really develops here on when, uh, early, early on Wednesday, potentially Tuesday into Wednesday. That's going to be 14th into the 15th. Um, and that activity spreads up into the upper Midwest as well. Uh, by the time we're reaching Wednesday during the day, Wednesday looks very hot in nature as well, just like this. So again, a lot of warm air surging into that uh, ridge that we see here. Maybe some cooler air still here for uh, eastern Canada, but definitely some cold air making its way in uh, to these kind of western and north central regions of the United States. Um, and by the time we reach Friday, we see a cold front comes through to the eastern United States. This is going to be Friday the 17th. Uh, let's see, Saturday, the 18th, we see this is offshore, sort of, but there's that activity in there. We have another storm moving onshore to the northwest. And by the end of the model run, most of the activity has shifted towards the western United States. Jet stream looks about like this. So probably the warmest over the central United States by a frame like this is what you would expect with some cooler air for the eastern United States and also for the northwestern United States as well. That's kind of the look that I'm seeing here. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and take a look at that total precipitation through the next 10 days. And as you can see, if you're anywhere in the whites, you're expecting practically no precipitation is what is expected. Uh, the grays will be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be 0.1 to 0.5 inches of precipitation. Uh, your blues will be half an inch to an inch of precipitation. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches of precipitation. And then your browns will be five to 10 inches of precipitation. Now, for total snowfall, through the next 10 days, we actually expect quite a bit. So if you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting. If anything, blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples will be 6 to 10. Pinks will be 10 to 20. Your pastels will be 20 inches plus. So this is actually the most I've seen in June, uh, probably since I've made this channel. This is pretty crazy. Multiple states expecting snowfall. Really wild to see, actually, just in general. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about that upcoming temperature pattern. Now here we are taking a look at that upcoming temperature pattern. Let's just take a look at today. As you can see, we have a full-blown ridge in the west still and a trough in the east. That is about to change as we approach later into the weekend. We're going to see a transition over the weekend, and then by early next week, it's going to be totally flipped. Uh, so just keep that in mind. We're going to see the warm air move eastward, 
we're going to see this cold air, it really starts with this cold air forcing its way down, which forces the, cold, the warm air to go eastward, and then this cold air is forced to leave, basically, because this warm air is knocking on the door. So by Saturday, uh, we see more cold air intruding. This warm air has shifted a little bit. It's kind of like oil and water, right? So this, imagine the cold air is the oil, uh, and the warm air is the water. The water has to move, okay? There's oil. It cannot mix. It has to move. Um, we, we have more oil over here, and the oil can't stay where the water is going, so it has to move as well. So that's how we kind of see it react to each other. Um, again, more oil intruding. Water is moving further eastward, and this oil over here is leaving. Okay, So we're seeing things warm up further and further eastward. And again, by Monday, look at this, totally flipped. We have a trough here in the west and a lot of warm air here in the east and in the central United States. So we've seen this fully move into these regions, and this trough has really taken over here for the western United States. That is the look at this point. Tuesday is going to be a lot of the same. Trough is even more dramatic. Warmth is even more dramatic over here. Very hot, very, very hot for the eastern United States, and very, very cold here out west compared to normal. Even very cold for some of those mountainous regions where there will actually be snowfall. So that will quite literally be cold, actually, <laughs> obviously, because it's going to be freezing. Uh, Wednesday, same exact story, nothing much has changed. And then by Tuesday, what we start to see happening is we see a lot of warmth everywhere. And this means that the pattern is kind of up in the air to change. Uh, we see more cold air making its way into the eastern United States, actually, over time. By Saturday, uh, we kind of see another trough here for the West Coast, which causes a lot of that warm air to be over most of the central United States. And then by the end of the model run, it's kind of like a little bit confused, but like this, where we have a trough that is impacting the Northeast. A lot of cold air, again, for the West. And then a lot of that warmth is mostly over the central and a little bit of the east central United States is what I would call this area here. Um, we see a little bit of that impact those regions as well. All right, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Let's take a look at that tropical uh, update though because I am going to show you guys the cyclonic relative uh, vorticity again. Now this basically is going to show us large scale rotation in the atmosphere. So large spinning storms um, are either normal low pressure systems or tropical systems. Uh, in this case, we're taking a look at the European model first off. We do have a tropical wave here in our main development region, which is the area offshore of Africa. This is where most tropical systems, usually not this early in the season, but this is where most tropical systems during the hurricane season actually start. We do see a tropical wave actually here uh, on Tuesday, June 14th, and that develops a little bit there. Uh, it's pretty far suppressed to the south, which usually means it has a less chance of developing. This is by Wednesday, June 14th. And it's heading pretty far north, but what we end up seeing happening is it actually just swings north like this and that usually makes them break up So we end up seeing that happening. What's interesting is by this point we have our second wave moving in This is by June 17th time frame. We see that one move in and it's a lot more intense uh, And this one heads further north quicker Which usually means it's probably gonna come to an end and then I see our third wave coming so we have uh, quite a bit of tropical activity actually uh, expected to begin to take place. And also by the 15th here in five days from now, I see this kind of messing around there uh, over here. Watch this region. We see something try to take place in there around this time frame. You see right there. See how that little bit of red on the very southern region of that yellow circle I just drew. You see how that little bit of red starts to develop and it flares up and then it kind of breaks up. That could be our next homegrown tropical system as well. So a couple of tropical signals popping up here on the European model. For the GFS model, which we're taking a look at now, uh, usually this model is a little bit more dramatic. We see our first uh, disturbance there, and this is on the 14th. Let's see, that might even be a tropical system that it has developing off the southeast by uh, Wednesday the 15th. Let's see, one, two, okay, well, we get a major golf tropical system here already so in the medium range so we see that develop around the same time that the European model has it develop except this one really gets going it hits Cuba and then it hits Louisiana actually is what looks like a hurricane uh, keep in mind this GFS model is known for doing absolutely crazy stuff so keep that in mind sometimes it's right but most times you're going to want to rely uh, more on the consensus of multiple models uh, just get the mixed opinion and right now uh, I would say the mixed opinion here is that we do have a tropical system or a tropical disturbance in the in the Caribbean, the southern Caribbean, I would say, um, 
around the 15th through the 20th time frame, Caribbean up northward towards the Gulf. The GFS model develops it. The, the European model has it kind of messing around in the Southern Caribbean and then really breaking up before it even gets up to the Gulf. So both systems have that disturb, or both uh, models better yet have that system, but they just, well, only one has it developing here in a major way. And then the other one has it not really developing that much. Uh, and we see that uh, bring a lot of impacts there on the GFS model, but we get probably a handful of tropical waves moving off of Africa here on the GFS model which is super interesting for the month of June. And honestly, this is just going to become more common as we move towards August and September and October, obviously. So we will see more of that coming up, but I feel like this is just a little bit early for that to be taking place. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. Let's go ahead and move on in just a moment and take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. All right, now here's your day one categorical outlook. We have four general thunderstorm risks in the lighter green areas, and that's where we expect general thunderstorms. So anything is possible. Uh, heat every watch, morning, and advisory, but we expect general thunderstorms. For the darker green region, we have a marginal risk of severe weather, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. The yellow area there is our slight risk of severe weather, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. And then the orange area is our enhanced risk, and that's where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to be possible today on June 10th. That's going to be Friday. Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas is our main concern. Now, as we take a look at the individual outlooks, this is all going to be based on 25 miles of a given location, by the way. Here's the wind outlook. For instance, uh, the 5% area, let's say you're in the green. Let's say your house is in the green. There's a 5% chance of damaging wind taking place within 25 miles of your house if you're in the green. Now for the yellow area, it's a 15% chance. And then for the red area there, it's a 30% chance of damaging wind taking place. For the hail outlook here, we have a 5% chance there in the green. And then a yellow, uh, a yellow area there where there's a 15% chance of hail taking place. For tornadoes, we have a 2% chance of tornadoes there within the green. Now, for the day two categorical outlook, things are looking a little less dramatic. We have a large light green region indicating general thunderstorms are going to be likely for a lot of folks, um, but only one darker green region there for the upper Midwest and the northern plains, and that is where we expect isolated severe weather to take place there in that marginal risk area. Now, for day three, we have a large general thunderstorm risk again, but we have the two darker green regions there where we expect isolated severe weather to occur in those marginal risk areas. And then we also have a slight risk up there for the northern plains, and that's going to be that yellow region where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. Now for day four, we do have one extended outlook here. This is going to be for Monday, June 13th, and we have that yellow region up there indicating a 15% chance of severe weather taking place. And that translates exactly to a slight risk of severe weather. So once this is within the three-day range where we have the categorical outlook, this should show up as a slight risk of severe weather. We will see that tomorrow, so be sure to tune in. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, I feel maybe even less confident than I did yesterday, although the models do both agree on that tropical system, so maybe that increases it a little bit. I don't know, but I'm still at a four out of six regardless. Also, for today's patron Highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our plot of patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Eagle, Lurla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Tana Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotillas, the Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.